What's going on, y'all? It is another beautiful day out here on the Alabama Gulf Coast. I am back on the Sea Dew. It has been a while since I have taken the Sea Dew, and uh, we are basically just going to be freestyling today. There are some bull reds in the area, jacks are still hanging around, and we may drift out and try to troll around for some kings. We're pretty much just going to do whatever gets thrown at us. So, yeah, let's cruise around, see if we can find something. Y'all stay tuned. Let's catch some fish. Got some birds diving right here, y'all. First cast going out. Oh, something just nailed it. Got him. Fish on, nothing big. First fish of the morning. What do we got, what do we got? It's like a little old Spanish mackerel. It was, all right. See you, dude. Not what we're looking for today, that's a small one. They are fun to catch though. And they can get really, really big. Very ferocious fish. I actually probably should have checked my leader because they can chew that leader up pretty good. If I hook a good fish, I might lose it. We just rolled over a loaded reef right here, about 25 miles from where we launched this morning. And I'm gonna drop this little silver Shimano jig, 120 grams down, and uh, see if we can get something to bite it. Something just nailed it. Got him. Fish on. Earth fish on the jig. See if we can get them up. What do we got? All right. Little old red snapper on the Shimano jig. All right, there he goes. I would not mind catching a couple of bigger snapper just like that. They're not in season right now, but they are a ton of fun to catch. Up and back down. Come on, big one. I mean, we just got some excellent structure down there too, y'all. There he is. Fish number two on the jig. What do we got? What do we got? Trigger fish, baby. Species number three on the day. <laughs> we ain't catching big fish, but we catching different species for sure. All right, buddy. Hooked them up under the chin. So these are some of the coolest fish out here. If y'all have not seen their teeth, look at those jokers right there. They will absolutely take a finger off if they get a hold of you. But if y'all don't know, the reason they call these a trigger fish is because you got this fin right here. No matter how hard I push, I'm not gonna be able to get that fin to go down unless I push the trigger, which is right here. If I push that trigger, that fin goes down so this is a gray trigger fish they got to be 15 inches to the fork to keep this guy's going back bye bye come on let's see if we can get one on a third drop got him there we go there we go that one might be a little bit better that one's got a little bit of weight to it i don't know how much more what do we got what do we got oh <laughs> that's why i hooked him in the head i was pulling him up sideways i knew it wasn't gonna be anything giant but it was pulling a little bit harder and that's because i hooked that dude in the side of the face sorry about that buddy get that out for you bye bye it has been non-stop with this jig 
I just have not been able to find any size to the fish that we're hooking. I mean, and where we're dropping, there's just massive stools of bait, as you can see, raised up off of that reef. And I know those fish underneath have got to be in a frenzy. Just dropping that jig right through that bait, hoping for it to get bit. to a uh, new reef as y'all can see the dolphins kind of just followed us over here pretty cool seeing them you know they definitely are not afraid of this jet ski because they were right in front of me jumping around and stuff got them there we go come on up uh oh that's a better fish it's crazy he's not really pulling down he just got a little bit of weight to him that's why because we hooked the trigger fish in the back <laughs> oh man come here buddy buddy i did not mean to do that to you my friend let's see you got him there we go come on Oh, that might be a good trigger. I would love to get a good trigger today. That's pumping like a trigger. Come on. Come on. Trigger is open. So we can keep one. It is a trigger. I hooked him in the tail. <laughs> oh, man. If you can't hook him in the mouth, hook him in the tail. Good gracious, y'all. All right, I'm going to swap out this jig right here for a, a little bit more of a flat fall jig. Also Shimano, and this is an 80 gram jig. So going a little bit lighter, I would like to get a legal trigger fish today. That would be really cool. And apparently, there's a lot of them down there. Oh, they're hitting it. Got him. There we go. Come here. Come here. That's a better fish. There we go. Golly, we snagged another trigger. That's how thick they are down there. We're just like hitting them. And obviously I can't tell how big they are because I'm pulling them sideways up and up through the water. I only think I've hooked one fish in the mouth on a jig today. And I've hooked six of them just snagging them. Hi, right, y'all. Well, it got a little bit rough on us, as y'all can see right here. We're back in here at the beach, and it's pretty strong west wind, about 20 miles per hour or so. But well, check it out. There's a couple of things I just want to kind of talk about. I've had a lot of people. Uh, asking questions about this sea dew and stuff. Uh, so I'm gonna touch on a lot of those questions here in a minute. Uh, but today's trip, uh, we went out, that's probably the furthest offshore that I have been in this sea dew, uh, which was 32 miles from where we launched this morning. So not exactly 32 miles straight offshore, but it was probably 15 miles offshore 31 miles from where we launched today. Um, went out there. <clears throat> well, we started the day off trying to find some redfish, stuff like that. They've been breaking out here on the beach. Really didn't find anything. We trolled a little bit, hit some rigs. Nothing was really working out, so we decided to push out to some reefs that we have never been to before and uh, caught, several, uh, caught several fish, several different species of fish and i only caught one of them inside the mouth really really crazy the rest i snagged so never expected to catch those fish that way um and even though we didn't catch any giants we don't have nothing in the cooler 
it was still a good fun day out on the water um and i get a lot of people that comment that say you know things like wow y'all went 31 miles offshore to catch things like that and well i didn't go out there to catch those fish that's just what happened to be out there you never really know what you're going to get on to um we saw a big mahi sky off in the distance you know there's mahi there's king there's cobia there's all sorts of stuff giant snapper amberjack bee liners you name it so it's a lot of stuff out there um but that is that's the reason why i bought a jet ski is this thing right here is extremely versatile you know uh, a lot of people look at this as being just a really really small platform a lot of people don't feel comfortable going out there in them um but i mean this thing handles the waves really really good i mean these we it, it got sporty out there we're right here next to the beach and we got strong winds coming in white caps and we were cutting up 30 mile an hour eating it heading back in uh, the thing about being in a sea dew is that you're not really taking on water so if i was in a boat and i got waves coming in over the bow my boat's taking on water maybe more water uh, than my bilge pumps can get rid of then we start to have that problem right well in this sea dew it's not you know i'm not taking on water anything like that um, so i'm really able to to cut into those waves uh, and if we do get in a situation to where we capsize, all we do is get in the water, well, we'll probably already be in the water. We flip it back over, hop back on, crank it up, and we continue the mission, right? Um, <clears throat> there are uh, a lot of, try to put it into perspective. So like you got these big surfing events, right? That happen um all over the world where these major swells are going on and you got these surfers that are riding these waves and stuff they don't put boats out there to uh run in there and rescue those surfers when they fall off their board or get in danger or anything like that you got people that are on sea dews riding those waves launching through them um because they're safer uh in, in those types of environment and they're the best machines for the job i'm just trying to put it into perspective because you get a lot of people that think going offshore in sea dews are are dangerous um and you know certainly i feel like that is also uh up to the person behind the wheel right um there there are a lot of things that we do safety wise uh, like I got my buddy out here, Kyle Moffitt. He went offshore with me today. I will never push offshore in this sea dew by myself. Either I'll have another jet ski uh, with me or I'll have another boat out there with me, but I'll never come out here alone. The same way when I'm out offshore kayak fishing, I don't kayak fish offshore alone. It's just not smart. Uh, along with that, inside my life jacket right here, I have an EPIRB, okay? So, if for any reason I get separated from my sea dew and I'm just out here floating along inside my life jacket and it always stays in my life jacket, I got my personal locator beacon. So all I gotta do, open that thing up, flip the antenna, hit the button, it's gonna send a signal to the Coast Guard and they're gonna come out here and find me. It's gonna give them my grid coordinates to where I'm at and I'll be rescued, right? So I don't go anywhere without this EPIRB on me. Hatch real quick, show y'all take my kill switch off. That's another thing, always wear your kill switch. But in here, we got our air horn. We also got whistles up front uh, if we don't want to use the air horn. I got a full blown flare kit with like 10 flares in it, smoke uh, flares. I got all kinds of stuff in here. So I got a full blown flare kit. And then I also have my radio. So if I'm out here and my ski won't uh, start or I'm having engine troubles, any kind of problems, I got my marine radio with GPS. 
So if my electronics aren't working, I can't pull my grid coordinates off of my uh, depth finder, I'll always have my grid coordinates on my radio. So um, that's another thing. If, if I capsize or my vessel's going under, I'm gonna make sure I grab my radio and call for help. And like I said, I'll, I'll have the grid coordinates right there. So, of course, there's a lot of things that can go wrong being out there on the water, but being prepared, um, knowing your vessel, like I didn't just buy this thing and uh, decide to go offshore. You know, it was one of the things where I made sure that I put several, several hours behind the wheel of this thing, understanding how it operates, how to do everything before I started getting comfortable uh, pushing offshore. Um, but I, another question that I do get though, is people ask me, why don't I just get a boat, right? Why don't I just get a boat? Well, simply put, um, money is a factor there, right? So I bought this Sea-Doo right here for $14,000. This vessel that I'm on, I bought it used. It's a 2020 Sea-Doo Fish Pro and I paid $14,000 for it, right? For me to be able to have a reliable, keyword, reliable boat to do what I just did, I would probably have to spend upwards of $50,000 or more, and that is for a used vessel. Um, I'm not gonna get anywhere close to being comfortable going offshore uh, in a boat for 14 grand, you know, that's gonna do the things that this Sea-Doo does um so it's kind of my thing on the channel y'all see me kayak fish a lot i see do uh fish I, I pretty much do things that allow me to get out there on the water catching these fish without having to spend tens of thousands of dollars uh, to be able to do it i've owned several boats in the past i've never owned a brand new boat and in order to own a brand new boat these days you have to have 80, 90, a hundred thousand dollars. I'm not doing that. Um, but I have owned three used boats. I've owned boats that I've paid over twenty thousand dollars for, and it's always something. There's always problems with these boats, and I just wouldn't feel comfortable doing what I just did, going 32 miles uh, away from shore in that boat. And then a couple more factors. Um, I get great gas mileage, great gas mileage on this thing. $50 fills my tank up from empty and I can run, I got about 70 miles of range on this Sea-Doo. So anyways, that pretty much concludes today's video. I hope y'all did enjoy it. Uh, and yeah, we'll see y'all next time. Uh, if y'all like the Sea-Doo content, Leave a comment, let me know, like the video, subscribe if you haven't already. We'll see y'all next time.